This is Graceland Keller with the Becker's Private Equity and Business Podcast, and I'm excited today to be joined by Vijay Vaswani, who is a partner at Bennett Thrasher. So Vijay, thanks so much for joining me today, and I'd love to have you start off by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about your business. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much uh, for having me on the show here, and glad to be glad to be in the rotation. Um as a way of introduction, again, my name is BJ Vaswani. I'm a partner at Bennett Thrasher, which is uh, one of the largest public accounting firms in the country. Uh, to give you a feel of our footprint, we've got roughly 500 folks and 50 plus partners across a number of states, uh, as well as op an offshoring arm in India too. Uh, but a heavy contingent of us are based in the Southeast out of Atlanta, uh, which for all intents and purposes is world headquarters and have a sizable pre uh, presence in Texas and the Mountain West region as well. Um, clients are obviously coast to coast and in some situations international as well. That's the firm in a nutshell. Um, myself specifically, I, I started and now lead the firm's transaction advisory practice, which is predominantly focused in and around doing quality of earnings engagements for mainly strategic and financial investors, both on the buy and sell side. Um, I joined BT now seven plus years ago to start this practice, and it's grown from mainly myself sourcing and executing these engagements to roughly 30 dedicated resources across multiple geographies, working deals all day, every day. Um, you know, knock on wood, a lot of success uh, through what we feel is a differentiated, a really differentiated model. Um, you know, my background's ex big four audit and transaction advisory, which is a pretty common pedigree for folks like myself in the QV space, but my value prop is uh, that I'm a former consumer of this type of work product. I've uh, been, uh, been, been on the buy side doing deals, uh, sourcing the signing in Corp Dev at, at two public companies, specifically in healthcare and technology. So wasn't you know just an auditor that you know one day decided to do M&A work, really understand how this product can be used uh, in the deal process. Um, and we've, we've built this thing uh, to be anchored in and around, you know, customized scope documents and work plans, super transparent pricing models, running big four quality reporting and analytics and being really high touch with our, our service delivery process. So we found that that's resonated for us in the marketplace and allowed us to create a very uh, sticky client base in the deal community. Um, in terms of types of transactions, you know, we're, we're industry agnostic over here work on deals of all shapes and sizes, but have really cut our teeth doing deals in the lower middle markets. I think, you know, 150 million of enterprise value and below kind of being our true bread and butter. Um, where, you know, the accounting may not be, accounting and financial reporting environment may not be the most sophisticated. Our, our team is kind of wired to roll up their sleeves and dig deep and almost go through a financial re-engineering process to help folks uh, use our work and make informed decisions about the deals that they're evalu evaluating and validate or disprove their investment thesis. So that's a, that's a overview of myself, the firm and the, and the practice in a nutshell. Great. Well, thanks for being here. And first question for you today, what trends are you currently watching in your space? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks have been reactionary to deal volumes dropping last year, and obviously can't can't blame them. Um, you know, the interest rate environment increased in was it late twenty twenty two. You know, we obviously had some PE platform deals go pencils down, just like everyone else. I really hate the term dry powder, but a lot of our private equity groups we had worked with had recently raised funds not too long ago, and. Uh, you know, intuitively, you would think that they would have to put that money to work. But a lot of our clients had said they had discussions with their LPs and were comfortable living off of their successes from the past. And we're going to wait on the sidelines for the market to reset, you know, have multiples contract before kind of getting back after it. So in 2023, we didn't really do that many PE platform deals. Um, but our group as a whole still worked on almost 200 transactions last year. We were still up almost 40% in terms of revenue from the prior year. And I think that's really uh, because we have a nice balance in terms of the type of clients we serve. Uh, we're, we aren't heavily concentrated in one particular area. A lot of kind of our peer groups out there are hyper-focused on private equity, which makes sense because they're effectively the lifeline for 
a QV shop like us, uh, given they're in the business of doing deals. But we have a decent mix of you know public companies we work with. Again, lower middle market transactions for them, but you know they were still working on strategic and opportunistic deals last year as things kind of came up in their ecosystem. Um, we did a lot of add-ons for PE platforms that we had originally worked with in the past, and a lot of those platform companies had you know no intention of slowing down even in the macro environment. Um, you know, some are even okay paying premiums just to con continue with their roll-up strategy to monetize their investment as they build scale and work towards an exit plan. Um, sell side deals, they were, they were kind of spotty last year on and off, but we also, um, you know, we had a nice mix of, of debt deals we did for private credit groups as well. So I think we have pretty balanced mix here and that really seemed to save us last year. This year, you know, starting in, in Q1, you know, we're seeing PE back at the table, a lot more platform deals being chased. Um, that too, in some sectors that were specifically slower the last year that had been, you know, adversely impacted by inflation and things like that. Um, and a lot, a lot of sell side QVs in the hopper too. So that means there's, there's some deals coming to market um, in the near term. I've overall, you know, generally believe the lower middle market serves as a leading indicator for broader deal markets. So, it's been hot out the gate for us in 2024 and hopefully that momentum continues. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your thoughts on that. And I'd love to kind of go along with that. I would love to hear what you are most focused on and excited about currently. Yeah. I mean, I think hitting on that last point that I, that I mentioned, I'm probably the most excited about um, a product that we've developed for private credit groups you know, a lot of times these private credit shops are, are backstopping PE deals and, you know, private equity group ultimately picks a provider like us to, to, to work with them. But we have, we've seemed to carve out a niche in doing QVs for debt funds on their non-sponsor back deals. Again, this is an area where we, you know, seem to win work where some of our uh, peer group tends to uh, slip up, if you will. Um, you know, there's a lot of boilerplate scope documents out there and whatnot in terms of what goes into a Q of E for a, for a private credit shop. Um, you know, for example, someone will just go down the path of slicing and dicing revenue recognition as if they're working on a control investment. Our product is, you know, really unique in that we cater to, you know, the things that really matter for groups like this, understanding, you know, run rate cash flow, the conversion cycle, future uses of cash, um, you know, all the things that really impact the ability to service debt. We look at you know asset quality from a collateral collateralization standpoint. Um, you know what happens when things go sideways. What levers can our client pull to stay the ship so they don't have their debt investment at risk? And and then again, given you know our focus is lower middle market, we really like to scrutinize not only the financials but what's not on the financials, more the off balance sheet risk, because that could um, that can create issues for for those those type of deals. But that's an area that you know we've carved out a, a pretty nice niche and. You know, when traditional lending markets froze and the interest rates interest rate environment was um, heightened, you know, we ended up doing a lot of work for for deals like this. Um, and so, this is an area we're probably doubling down in more and kind of really attacking the market. Wonderful. And I would love to hear what advice you would give to emerging leaders and people who one day hope to be a leader like yourself. Oh, that's a good question. So. I would say it's um, it's really good to challenge the status quo. You know, like don't let what others have done be the way and means by which you have to do things. Like really look look to find ways to think outside the box and separate yourself from the pack. Probably always good to be good to be nimble too, where you can kind of read and react to changes and challenges as they come up. Um, that flexibility really permeates success. I think. And then it's, you know, broadly, I always try to think about um, how my people are impacted or affected, you know, what's their, what's their glide path and trajectory for success as well. If, you know, if it almost like a rising tide concept, right. If, if we're all, we're all kind of growing in the same direction, you know, we'll, we'll all grow together. So, I mean, those are probably some of the things that come to mind uh, for future leaders. Wonderful. Well, Vijay, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today on the Becker's Private Equity Podcast and sharing your insights on some of these issues. Yeah, thanks for having me and appreciate you guys uh, bringing me into the rotation here.